Okay, so uh, we had already, I mean, set up all the ingredients. Um, so this is this is the formula that we had obtained for uh, anti-commuting, anti-commuting systems. This was the anti-commuting. BC system. Okay, and um, this was the uh, yeah. This is a lambda differential. So this is lambda, and that's one minus lambda differential. Okay, B and C, and this is this was the answer that we obtained, right? Uh, in fact, this answer uh, you could have just obtained by uh, matching the matching all the the singularities and the zeros coming from this correlation function which is just, uh, uh, for every zero, you just put a E, the prime form, right? And then there are, let's say, theta functions, uh, and in including also, you know, these guys you can just fix by looking at the dimension, okay? Uh, as a function of Z, it must have dimension lambda. At a function of W, it should be uh, dimension one minus lambda. So you can fix these numbers here, these uh, sigmas. Okay, and then finally the theta, you can in fact fix by just looking at the monodromy properties. Okay, so it's pretty unique, I mean, somehow, right? I mean, uh, of course, Berlin days derived that, but I'm saying that uh, even if you didn't know, you could have just guessed the answer. Okay, so <clears throat> this was the, and then there was a super ghost, which was a, we had a long discussion about uh, that. So, but in any case, we will just use the, the, the formula, the simplest situation, okay? which I just wrote down last time, right? Okay, uh, so uh, one thing I should mention here, uh, which I forgot to mention, that uh, the, from the Riemann-Roch theorem, so the number of B0 modes uh, minus the number of C0 modes was equal to, that was this formula here, Q times G minus one, two lambda minus one uh, times G minus one. Okay, uh, now from this we concluded that for lambda equal to one, so one differential, uh, we concluded that uh, this, must, this is equal to, so for, so for this case it is simply G minus one, right? For lambda equal to one case. And then we said, that, well, for lambda equal to one, this is one differential, this is zero differential, so it's just a scalar function, right? So this must have one zero mode, because we know function has only, I mean, a constant is mode, right? So from that, we uh, could deduce that B has G zero mode, right? Which again, we kind of knew. We knew that there are G omega, I mean, holomorphic differentials, right? But in the discussions that we'll do, make, we also have, we have an orbifold, right? we'll have the internal Calabiao space will be replaced by an orbifold. So that would mean that the bosons are twisted and bosons and fermions both are twisted inside the Calabiao, right? So, uh, for example, let's say, suppose I look at a one differential, which is a twisted differential now, okay? So you can, again, apply the same formula, riemann roch theorem, but now think of this as a one differential, but which is twisted. So some non-trivial boundary conditions as you go around the cycles. Huh? Uh, some, it picks up some phases as you go around the cycles. And the same thing will happen with the scalar. This will be a twisted scalar. Okay? This formula is the same. Nothing, nothing changes because this only depends on the degree. Degree is the same. It is just that you have a twist. Okay? And the way to understand this is that, remember, a line bundle we said is characterized by the degree of the divisor. Right, uh, so the line bundle is characterized by the degree, but that's not the whole story, because remember the, there was an Abel map which took the uh, set of divisors. Right, a degree is uh, I mean, line bundle is characterized by a divisor. That is fine, right? But the divisor has how, what information it has? It has first of all the degree, which you can immediately check, right? Uh, compute, I mean, see, immediately see. But there is also so if I have a divisor here, this is mapped via Abel to Abel map to CG, or more precisely CG divided by Z to the G plus tau Z to the G, right? The Jacobi variety. 
Okay. So if a fixed degree, but you see, I, I still had this divisor. So a degree fixes the, I mean, how many points are there and so on, uh, poles and zeros. Uh, but it also, this has also the additional information. It is which point in the Jacobi variety the divisor is mapped to. Right? So it has more information than just the degree. And they, so, so, so in fact, the line, bund line bundle is characterized by the degree plus a point in the CG, in the, the Jacobi variety, right? Now, when it is untwisted, you basically go to the Jacobi variety, simply just goes to the, uh, some standard point. Hmm? Now, you can ask the question, what happens when I twist? When I twist, it just moves from, it goes to another point in the Jacobi variety, okay? That is what it does. Uh, in fact, you can understand that because, uh, so a, a, a non-trivial point here would be characterized by, I mean, I can just write it as some alpha uh, plus, uh, uh, plus tau beta, right? Where alphas are G numbers here, beta are G numbers, but they are not integers, right? Because we are saying there's a non-trivial point. Those are exactly the twists around the A and B cycles. Uh, the covering space, you can do that, sure. So yeah. You would have a different divisor, a multi, a, a multi yeah, divisor. yeah. I mean, so that, oh yeah, you can, of course, do that. But we'll not, we'll not go to covering space, we'll just stay with the genus G. Hmm? Yes, but okay, but uh, in this case, uh, you would say that uh, you change the number of. <laughs> no, the number will not, I mean, no, that will not, no. No, no, you have to look at that, uh, I mean, so if you go, so that will be, uh, uh, suppose I have a, 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 some nth cover, right? Then you consider objects which are, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, and, uh, I mean, there are this, you can, uh, you can, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, you can reduce it in terms of eigen, eigen functions, right? Uh, with a particular eigenvalue under the Zn group. And you have to choose that particular eigen thing, right? So a particular eigen function. So for example, if it's a Z2, take a Z2 case, right? So you have, when you have, when you say it's a twisted object, right? Then when you go to the covering space, you should look at the odd object. Okay, so, so you, you, multi, you multiply the, the object, uh, you, you, you go to higher rank, um, rank uh, genius. Yes. You yeah, out. exactly. You, you put it, uh, That's right. Uh, in terms of E1 and odd and so on and so forth, okay. right? For the Z2, uh, uh, more generally, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, so, so let's look at this case again, uh, again, lambda equal to one case, but now consider, imagine that it's a twisted one, okay? So these alphas and betas are not integers. Hmm? Not all the alphas and betas are integers. Uh, in that case, this formula is still true, but we know that there should be no scalar, no function, no zero mode for the function, because uh, it's twisted. So there'll be no zero mode. So that tells you that in the twisted case, uh, this is zero, but uh, the difference is g minus one. So the twisted differentials will be only g minus one. Okay. So there'll be g minus one zero modes for the. This is quite unlike genus one case. In genus one case, once you have a twisted sector, there is no one differential, which is uh, which has a. Uh, I mean, there's no holomorphic one differential. But in higher genus, you do get. Uh, so in particular, those of you who have worked with the uh, orbifolds, uh, you see in the uh, at genus uh, one, in the twisted sector, there is no lattice sum in the internal theory. I mean, the where the coordinates are twisted, simply because there are no holomorphic one differentials which are twisted, right? But when you go to higher genus, even in the twisted sectors, there will be zero modes. Right? So there will be lattice sums even there. Okay, that's... Uh, Okay, so this is uh, the thing, and so now let's go back, go to the uh, correlation function that we are interested in. So we want to compute FG, right? So as we, so FG was the coupling, FG W square to the G, where W is the gravitational, I mean, wire uh, superfield, and W had the expansion, so W mu nu, had the expansion uh, T mu nu. This was the gravity photon field strength. plus dot 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 plus theta theta r. Huh? 
Again, so sigma lambda sigma, r mu nu lambda sigma. And they, they have all a definite duality, sub-duality property. Either they are all sub-dual or, or anti-sub-dual. OK, uh, so uh, if I expand it, so I have a d4 theta. If I expand it, uh, so remember there are two thetas here, but this is epsilon ij. So this, this has an index ij, but this is epsilon ij, it's proportional to epsilon ij. Okay, so, uh, so when I expand it, uh, so uh, integrate out a four thetas, then we'll find the, co uh, the amplitude should be, should involve two r's, r square, I mean, so to soak the th four thetas, right? And then the remaining things will be t square to the g minus one. So this is the amplitude we want to calculate. So that's the, our aim. Now, first thing is to identify what are the vertices if you want to do string calculation. So for the, this is, of course, a graviton vertex. That is fine. And this one is the ramon ramon field. Okay? This Vt is a ramon ramon field. And what is uh, uh, nice about this is uh, that the structure of this ramon vertex is uh, in the minus half picture. So I, let me just write down the left movers. There are some similar discussion before the right movers. So this left and the right. So let's see, look at the left mover. Uh, this is nothing else, but there'll be some, the kinematic, I mean, uh, kinematic, uh, the, some, uh, direct, some kinematics here. Uh, so it will be something like this here, phi one plus phi two. And then, so this is the space time part. Remember, so we bosonize all the, uh, the 10. Uh, uh, so you, have, you think of 10 dimension, you can uh, think of it as a five complex directions, right? It, for, each, so for each of these complex directions, there there's a complex fermion, the partner of uh, the boson, right? Psi mu. And then each of these complex fermion, you can bosonize it. So phi1 is the first complex fermion, phi2 bosonizes the second complex fermion, and so on and so forth. Right? So, think, so the space is R4 cross uh, Calabria, so RB fold. This is the space. Okay, so this is six dimensional space. Uh, so we, we are splitting that in terms of five complex directions, right? Uh, so each complex fermion we bosonize, right, like that. And here it will be a spin field, which again I can write it as i by two, i by two, phi three plus phi four, plus phi five. Okay. Uh, why is it all of them the same sign? Because this this is a partner of the gravitational. Multiplet, gravit gra graviton, right? So that internal charge will be three half. Okay. I is that uh, clear? So this is internal charge is three half. So they, they all have the same sign. Okay. In some convention that you choose in, uh, to give the signs, they, this will all be this will be three half charge. I mean half plus half plus half. This is in contrast with the, uh, uh, for example, in the if you take the uh, other multiplets, not the gravitational multiplet, but some other multiplet. In that case, it will not be all the charges, will be, it will not be the same, right? Instead of plus three half, you can have plus half or minus half, and so on and so forth. But this is the, uh, yeah. Um. Okay. So that, that is the uh, uh, kind of vertices that we have to deal with. And of course, these are these are in the minus minus half picture. So uh, this is this is the, this is this the, the there is a super ghost part here. So this is in the minus half picture. So there is a e to the minus phi by two. So this phi is the bosonization of the super ghost. Yeah. Even number yeah, but those those will appear in the in the other multiplex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean, for, for example, so this is the this is the. Uh, the spin field, the, the, the supersymmetry generator, is basically the internal part of supersymmetry generator is that. Is that huh? So if I started from the gravitational graviton, of course graviton has no information about the internal sector. So when I do a SUSY transformation, I will just get that, right? Whereas on the other hand, if I had started with some modulus field, let's say psi, psi of uh, say psi three, psi three I had started, or psi three bar I had started with, then when I apply this guy, then I'm going to get uh, something like, uh, uh, minus phi three plus phi four plus phi five, right? 
so the, the, so the total charge will become half or minus half depending on whether you start with the psi 3 or psi 3 bar yeah yeah correct correct yeah 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 the question of hypermultiplet or this will come when you combine the left and right yeah so actually all the discussion i will just do for say one sector left movers let's say and then the right movers discussion will be exactly the same yeah? okay uh, okay so so this is the thing so the, uh, this is the uh, super ghost uh, the bosonization of super ghost right remember uh, super ghost system was bosonized in terms of a scalar phi with certain background charge and uh, this psi psi eta system so that was the okay uh, so now let's uh, Okay, the total number of um, total ghost charge on a genus G surface, which again follows from that Riemann rock theorem that we wrote down, right? So total ghost number, super ghost number, I mean, should be equal to 2G minus 2 on a genus G surface. Uh, I mean, this again, the same formula, 2 lambda minus 1 uh, times G minus 1, but lambda is 3 half now. So it gives you that. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, two to correct. Yeah. So that, that's the total ghost charge. But on the other hand, each of these vertex comes with a minus half charge. Okay. Because we are using this minus half picture here. Each of them is appearing with minus half. How many vertices are there? There are two g minus two vertices. Ramon Ramon vertices. So the total charge coming from here is minus G minus 1, right? So actually, what I'll need to do is to insert uh, 2G minus 2 plus G minus 1. This G minus 1 to balance that charge. Okay? That many PCOs I need to insert. Okay. PCO, okay? Uh, that's the. Which means it's 3G minus 3. Okay. So let's, so let's uh, consider this. And finally, so this is the VT. And what about the graviton? Uh, the graviton vertex will be the Nibishwarz Nibishwarz vertex. So graviton vertex will be. Uh, dx mu plus i p dot psi psi mu. And similarly for the, the right movers, I, I'm, as I said, I'll just write down the left movers. Uh, so this will be the structure. And since we are interested in the Riemann tensor, uh, so uh, the relevant term is psi psi mu. Right? Although you, you, you do the calculation keeping that, but you can show that actually this doesn't contribute. This part gives you zero answer. Uh, but so it, ultimately, what will appear is just that term from the left and that similar term from the right. So each vertex, each graviton will give you two, two momenta, which is what you want for the Riemann tensor. Right? Okay. And, but these all have to be self-dual or anti-self-dual. Right? So you have to choose a polarization in such a way that these are all self-dual or anti-self-dual. And uh, similarly for the gravi-photon. Right? So I have cho chosen the sign, the plus relative sign plus here. Okay, and similarly, that I'll choose some particular sign for the right movers. Okay, and uh, correspondingly here also. Okay, so this is the uh, two. So I put the graviton vertex. So let's say this. Let me call it VG, uh, and that is VT. So I'll put VG, uh, and um, so again, what I do since I'm already complexifying the space-time part, I will choose just the vertex psi one, psi two, for one graviton. And for the other graviton, uh, I'll choose psi 1 bar, psi 2 bar. Okay, this part. This is again, I mean, you can't, you don't have too much freedom, right? I guess in self dual, there are only three components, right? Self dual or anti self dual. And so these are just two of them, but there's one more. But we just choose this kinematics. So, so the operators that we are looking at is essentially, so VG 
uh, we g again at uh, the point z1 and z2 and uh, uh, and then the uh, then uh, g minus 1 of the vt we choose with the with the one kinematics here so so let me write it as e to the i by 2 phi 1 plus phi 2 times uh, let me just abbreviate it by the spin field sigma hmm? that internal part internal part i just abbreviate like sigma so this is at say xi and similarly e to the minus i by 2 phi 1 plus phi 2 and sigma at point y is product i going from 1 to g minus 1 so notice this uh, the, the 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 way we are choosing this the total i mean the internal part is the same you see they are all the same signs okay spin field and that that means the internal internal sector gives you a total charge in the three planes in the three let's we call it third fourth and fifth planes right these are the third fourth and fifth complex planes and we have to bosonize them there is a net charge right so the char total charge for each of them is you can see uh, there are g minus 1 here g minus 1 here and each of them comes with a half okay so there are g minus 1 charge in each plane so these are the charges uh, these are the charges of phi 3 phi 4 and phi 4 and phi 5 so it's a very tight uh, situation here uh, these guys we are cancelling because you see total charge here is zero, the space-time part, right? And similarly here, the two gravitons we have chosen, one of them as psi 1, psi 2, other as psi 1 bar, psi 2 bar. Uh, so this also the charge cancels. So the space-time uh, charges are cancelling, but the internal charge we have chosen to be. Internal, we have no choice, you see. Because once I have chosen a definite self-duality or anti-self-duality property, then these charges are all the same plus all of them are plus so we have no choice here or all of them are minus not not you cannot have mixed things uh, so that's why there is this object now so how can i i mean naively you would say okay the answer is zero because how can you balance the charge right but we have the pcos and that's exactly the, uh, the right number right so from pco of course pco there are many terms in pco right in particular there is a term which is uh, e to the phi the the super ghost e to the phi times tf the 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 super i mean the fermionic partner of the stressed energy tensor right plus other junk is there okay but you, you see we'll exactly only this part will contribute because this this is the or this is the form psi bar i mean psi psi bar dx uh, yeah plus psi dx bar that is the structure okay so uh, so and there are three g minus three of them. So what happens is that from all of the TF, you pick up exactly this object, and that too only the internal sector. So there is a psi bar i dxi summed over i, right? I is over all the five directions, right? However, uh, the relevant term, the only term which will contribute here is the internal part, right? And uh, so that will balance exactly all these charges. G minus one here, G minus one there, G minus one there. It'll balance the charge. So from the PCO, only one one type of term contributes. So that's why the calculations become extremely easy. I mean, compared to what could have been, you know. Uh, I mean, if you just imagine that all that every element of this PCO is contributing, it would be a mess. Yeah? That that's a simplification of this. Okay, so uh, that's the. Yeah, and now uh, so once we have that, then we can start writing down the correlation functions for each of this uh, the uh, field, right? Each of the, I mean, uh, so the space-time part, uh, then the uh, internal part, everything we can write down one by one uh, using this bosonization formula of the. Uh, so what we'll do first is to write down all the things all the part of the correlation function which depends on the spin structure. Because remember, in the, right in the beginning I said that uh, the, the only hope of relating it to a twist, uh, topological amplitude is 
after the spin structure sum, right? Because on the, phys on the physical string side, there is, in the NSR formulation, there is a spin structure, whereas in the topological sector, there is no spin structure at all. So you need to do the spin structure sum. So we'll focus on the spin structure dependent part of the correlation function. And that, of course, is contained in the fermion correlation functions and the super ghost correlation functions. Those are the two things which, uh, which, which uh, involves the spin structure. Okay. So uh, first of all, let's see the space-time part. The space-time fermions, that is. Okay. Uh, by using this formula, uh, formula there, uh, you see you can... Uh, no, I have not... No, this, the, the, I should have a more general expression here. Because this is all e to the i phi to the minus i phi. Whereas here I have a half, halves, right? So, okay, there, there you can write down a general, more general formula. Huh? Okay, uh, where you have not just b and c, you, have, you, you write it in terms of bosonized object, e to the i q phi, q is any charge, and e to the minus i q phi, or some, or some of our q's should be equal to uh, this quantity. And then you can write down this formula. But as I said, uh, this entire thing can be just uniquely fixed up to a constant, up to Z independent constant. You can uniquely fix it by studying the singularity. It produces the correct singularity, correct monodromy, and the correct dimension. You can uh, fix that. So anyway, so the space-time part, space-time part is... Um, making some B and C colliding. True, yeah, but not half integer, right? And here we'll, we have half integers, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the half digit already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just uh, think of this as some, uh, replace this by e to the IQ phi, and this is e to the minus IQ phi. Uh, this will, uh, uh, so this will be basically Q1 dot, Q, I mean QI dot QJ, right? So it's just uh, replacing uh, that. Okay, so uh, this part is uh, theta of uh, theta, the spin structure. The spin structure I write like S. Uh, the, these are the characteristics, spin structure characteristics. So uh, square of uh, half um, x i minus y i. Um, so the reason why, because uh, you, you see the x and y, the space-time charges are opposite. That is why it's uh, minus, minus sign here, uh, plus z minus w. So this is at the position at z, let's say, uh, this at w, the two gravitons. So that's coming with a plus charge and a minus charge. So, so that's that. Um, square, because there are two planes, right? Um, uh, divide, uh, I will write, yeah, just, uh, then there are some prime forms. Uh, let me just write down. I mean, this has no spin structure dependence. Spin structure dependence only in the theta function. But let me just write down for completeness. Over e to the half xi yj. Okay. There, there should be some more prime forms because also there is a z, z, z minus w should also be there. Okay, but anyway, this is not important, and this is all written in the paper. I mean, the, I think our most important thing is the spin structure dependence. Huh? So that's this. Ah, oh, yeah, it is there actually. There is a e square. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there, there is a uh, e of x i z. Let me just write the full thing here for one of them at least. Uh, y i w divided by e x i w e y i z and then one over e square z z w right all these structures you can see right i mean this has uh, each of these correlator will give you a first order pole so there will be second order pole here that is why you have a e square down here so, so it's uh, okay. and there is no sigma here because the power of sigma comes with the Q, capital Q. Capital Q is the two lambda, the background charge. But uh, these are just ordinary fermions. When you bosonize, you get a scalar without any background charge. So these are, the sigma will appear for the super ghost. So that's that. And then uh, we have the super ghost part. 
super ghost. Um, you see, in this case, we don't have any of that. Um, the I mean, we, yesterday I wrote down this formulas for the, from Berlin Day, uh, where you had arbitrary number of not arbitrary uh, uh, some num some numbers of xi, some numbers of eta, etc. Those are that's a horrible expression. I mean, you, know, <laughs> you don't even want to look at it. But here we have no etas and so on. We have just one xi because that xi has to be removed, right? Uh, I mean, there's the one zero mode that you have to remove. And all you are left with is just this, uh, where is it? Huh? I didn't write, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I should put here Z and W. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, so this are just, the distinction is just the kinematics we have chosen. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, correct, correct. E to the minus V by 2 and E to the minus V by 2. Right? So that's the charge. And so you can use this. Uh, this the, here I have not written on the formula. This is only for the anti-commuting system. But uh, towards the end we wrote that, I mean, so the, this, this expression is uh, 1 over theta. Theta comes the denominator here. Right? Again, the spin structure dependence is there. And, the, and then just look at the charges. So each of these vertex comes with a charge plus half uh, here, pl uh, minus half, minus half. So you get here um, uh, minus half sum over xi plus yi. Okay, uh, that's that. And then we have the PCOs. We, uh, I mentioned to you there are three g minus three PCOs. Right? Let's call the, the, I mean, the positions of those guys as some, uh, some Zs. Huh? So position of PCO are the, are the Zs, let's say. Uh, not Z, I mean, unfortunately. Yeah, OK. OK. Yeah, Z, I mean, unfortunately, is the same symbol. But this has an index down. Okay. <laughs> so A goes from 1 to 3G minus 3. Because there are 3G minus 3 PCOs. Uh, so that uh, will give me a plus sum over ZA. And then here there is a uh, minus 2 delta. Hmm? 2, because capital Q for the GO system, uh, super GO is 3 half, so capital Q is 2. That's the reason for the Q, 2 times delta. Hmm? Okay. So there are, these are 3G minus 3, 3 of them. And these are, each of them is g minus 1, g minus 1, right? So it, it, it uh, works out correctly, right? Because you see 3g minus 3, and uh, there's a half here, but when you add that up, this will contribute a minus g minus 1, right? So the divisor, divisor class is 2g minus 2, right? And that's exactly the 2g minus 2. So this is a, just a check. I mean, every time, sometimes you might miss something, you know? So you can always check it every step. Okay, uh, and then there are some yeah prime forms which are, I will not write. I mean there are there are these prime forms which do not depend on spin structure. This is all written in the notes uh, in this paper. Uh, this is the paper of uh, this is the paper with the, uh, Antoniadis, uh, Gawa, and Taylor, and that is um, nine, uh, ninety-three. Yeah, it, it's a. Uh, Okay, I don't know. Okay, 93 paper. Uh, I don't. I cannot read the number here. Okay. All right. Uh, so this, these are the. Now there is still. We have not come, finished with the spin structure dependence. So there is the space-time fermion we have taken care of. The super ghost we have taken care of, right? But there is still the internal fermions. Okay. Internal fermions also, of course, depend on spin structure. Uh, so that. to remember 11 o'clock okay okay just quickly <clears throat> okay the internal part now the the clubio part uh, that uh, again it's a very uh, uh, all of them you see they all have the same sign they are the same spin field huh? 
So this is going to be theta s. So there are three planes, theta s um, uh, with the, but now because these are twisted fermions, as you go around these are in, the, in the twisted sector, in ge generic twisted sector of the orbifold. Yeah? So I will put here also this h, this is just to indicate what boundary conditions we are imposing, right? So around each cycle, you, you can have twist or no twist, or, you know, uh, so this has all that information. And uh, uh, then you have half sum over xa, xi plus yi. Each, each plane gives you a half for the spin field. Uh, and, uh, and then, uh, as we said, these charges, what will balance this charge? It is exactly the TF part of the PCO. TF part of the PCO, right? Uh, so there will be, uh, so what will happen, there are 3G minus 3 PCOs. Uh, it, they have to give, uh, I mean, each plane, it has to give G minus 1 charges for each plane, right? So there will be some, and then you have to take into account all partitioning, right? I mean, from 1 TF, it may be the first plane contributes, uh, and the, but then you have to sum over all possibilities. So there, is, so there is some partitioning. I write some partitioning for the ZA. ZAs are there. I write it as some UA, VA, uh, VA uh, U, V, and W. Hmm? Not W. U, V, and something. Um, OK, let's call it U1, U2, and U3. Huh? So there are G minus 1. This is a grouping. There are 3G minus 3 of them. You group it into G minus 1, G minus 1, G minus 1, and then take all partitioning, taking into account the antisymmetrization correct antisemitization properties, et cetera. So say, let's say this is the U1. And the same thing. So basically, I have a product like this. Ui, the Hi, the various twists in different planes. And here will be Ui. So each plane. Okay. And uh, once again, and, and then, of course, we, are, uh, I mean, we have taken the fermion from the PCO, from the TF. But there will be DXI left over, right? product of DXI. Um, DXI, you see, not DXI bar, because these guys have a positive charge. So the part which will contribute from the fermion, uh, from the TF, will be psi bar I DXI. Right? So, uh, so there will be DXI here. Uh, product, product over there. Altogether, each plane will give me G minus 1 or such things. Each plane. So that's the structure. OK, uh, so now just uh, let's put together all the theta functions which are there. Uh, so we have uh, space time. So we have this is the, coming from the space time. This is coming from the ghost. So we have uh, see, in the numerator as, as expected. There are two theta functions here, three theta functions here, five theta functions, right? Because after all, there are five complex planes. So on the, in the 10 dimension, there are five. And the denominator wave this. Now, we want to do spin structures, but that uh, we cannot do it in this form, right? So we have to choose some convenient gauge, because these Zs are the positions of PCOs, and uh, we expect that the uh, result should not depend on the position of the PCO. So we can make some convenient choice, okay, uh, so that somehow this denominator theta function cancels with one of these numerator theta functions. Okay? And then we are done, because then we, we can do the spin structure sum. So that is possible. Uh, that's the gate choice. Uh, that's the gate choice we can make. So what we'll do is we'll choose the position ZA that such that this guy cancels with one of the space-time theta function. So the choice here is sum over ZA uh, equal to sum over YI minus Z plus W plus 2 delta. So as a result, what will happen is that, yeah, it will cancel one of these. Uh, yeah, if you substitute that, it will cancel one of these guys. Is it always possible? It is always possible uh, by basically Jacobi inversion theorem, right? Uh, Jacobi inversion theorem says that, uh, uh, I mean, these are all, remember, these are all, this notation, what it means. It means uh, P naught, this is in the map, P naught to, P naught is some base point to Z A of omega i. That's, as a, this, that's what we mean. So this, uh, in fact, I mean, this again, I hope this is not confusing, right? Uh, what I mentioned is that these are all, the argument of theta functions will be 
uh, after mapping the point on the Riemann surface to the Jacobi, right? Uh, by this choosing some base point and integrate these objects. So the equations are understood to be in that sense. Okay, that is the sense. So the left hand side is this. So sum over A equal to uh, P naught to Yi, sum over uh, omega omegas. I mean, so let me put here a vector notation. So there are G omegas, and this must be satisfied for each component, right? Uh, and, and so on. Okay. And then plus two delta i. Uh, the delta delta is again a, a G component vector. Huh? So so this equation can be satisfied. And basically, Jacobi inversion theorem says is that uh, if you have G number of points here, G number of the, these are arbitrary, right? We are trying to choose some z's, no? But it's enough to have just G of them to find the solution. It's not surprising because after all. Uh, I mean, uh, this is a point on the Riemann surface, basically is like one complex variable, right? Is being mapped to a uh, g-dimensional complex manifold, complex space. So if I have g points here on the Riemann surface, then it is, uh, I mean, expected that we'll cover at least, no? Locally. But in fact, it is true that you can actually cover. Huh? So th this, is, this is always possible. Okay. Actually, we have too many points. I mean, we have 3g minus 3 points. So there's a huge number of points. We can... It, certainly choose such a gauge. So once you choose that gauge, then this is cancelled. Uh, one of them uh, gets cancelled. And then you do the spin structure sum. And um, uh, you can check uh, I mean, okay, in the spin structure sum, you need to fix the relative phases between the different spin structures. And that you can fix here unambiguously uh, because we are, the arguments are halves, right? So when you do a monodromy, uh, X or Y going to X plus A cycle, X plus B cycles, and so on, then because of the half, you can actually fix the relative coefficient. It, that is the, in contrast with the Nebuchadnezzar sector. If it was purely Nebuchadnezzar, then you cannot fix it. Because, uh, okay, but here it's a half, so you can actually fix it. And, uh, okay, so that, uh, this, the, the signs are fixed, and then you can do the spin structure sum. Okay. And uh, so I'll just state the result. Uh, after doing the spin structure sum, you find, of course, you'll have four theta functions. The answer is this, theta of sum over xi plus z minus w minus delta, okay? Um, and then uh, the twisted theta functions, uh, which is where, where is it? The internal part, uh, did I write the internal part? Uh, uh, no. Yeah, internal part is that, right? So you see there's a twisted, there's a HI twist for each plane, right? So that will be the twisted ones. I call them theta H, uh, H1, Okay, minus H3, I don't know. This uh, Sum over U, U3. I mean, remember, these are the partitioning of the ZA in terms of G, uh, U1, U2, U3. G minus 1, G minus 1, G minus 1. So that's that. Um, minus delta. And similarly, uh, theta of minus H2. Sum over U2. Uh, or U4, I don't know, U3, I, I wrote it as that, okay. Okay, I mean, there is something like this here. H1. U1, maybe, or something. So, so there are these three theta functions, huh? and you get that. Okay. So this is the, now, already you can see something amazing happening here, right? Uh, because if you now compare with that expression, this uh, expression here, um, uh, you, you see, uh, if you look at the theta function here, um, the, the, there is one delta, minus delta here. Okay? So Q is like 1. Okay? But what is Q equal to 1 means what? It's like uh, you are doing a 1 differential. Okay? It's a, it's a correlation function for so you remember this Q, Q was 2 lambda minus 1. 
So if Q is 1, that means we are, uh, it's like lambda equal to 1. Okay? So these objects appear uh, precisely for the correlation function of BC system. No, I mean, I shouldn't use the B. Uh, okay, I mean, uh, some system, which is a differential 1 and differential 0 system. Okay? That's exactly what we want from the to topological theory, right? In the topological theory, after twisting, uh, this, this system has become, uh, some of the psi's became dimension 1, psi bars became dimension 0. And that's exactly what you see here. So somehow the spin structure sum is what is taking you to the twisted theory. That, that's what is happening here. Okay. These are the internal, internal sector. OK. Um, the other thing is that you see, um, uh, you remember the Riemann vanishing theorem. Riemann vanishing theorem says, I mean, if I didn't have this twist, this would have been 0. That's a general statement of Riemann vanishing theorem. If I have just a positive g minus 1, there are g minus 1 points here. Uh, g minus 1, this is, this is, of course, delta. This is 0 identically for any value of u if there was no twist. Okay. So what this is saying is that the theory that this will be non-zero only in the twisted sector. Okay. I mean, which is, again, I mean, we expect, right? Because it should be in some n equal to 2 sector, right? I mean, n equal to 1 coming from the left, n equal to 1 coming from the right. The twisted sector that you see here. This one, if, if this was not there, okay, then this would be 0 by Riemann vanishing theorem. Right? And that kind of explains why, uh, you remember where the z and w came from? These were the gravi graviton, graviton vertices. The z and w were coming from the graviton vertices. And that was the, the psi 1, psi 2 term p dot psi 1, psi 2, and psi 1 bar. So this was at, sitting at point z, and this one was sitting at psi 1 bar, psi 2 bar. This was sitting at w. Hmm? But one might have asked, why, I mean, why did I do this? OK, we did that because we want to look at the piece Riemann tensor. right? But look at the full vertex. The vertex is also a dx term. right? That dx term will not contribute because that will not enter in the, in the spin structure sum. So as far as spin structure sum is concerned, this will be not there, Z and W. In which case, by Riemann vanishing theorem, it will vanish. So that means this will not contribute. OK, this is a bit, I mean, there are some subtleties associated with that, but I will not go into that. I mean, the subtleties, but, but I mean, it, it turns out that in order, because we have chosen a particular gauge here, gauge choice, where this gauge choice. OK. Uh, if Z and W were not there, uh, I mean, then the gauge choice will not involve that, right? So it's in a different gauge choice, this vanishes. Okay. But one can show that it does not matter. This part of the, you can change, uh, you can change the position of the PCOs separately for this part of the correlator and that part of the correlator. Okay? This is a peculiarity for this. In general, it's not possible. In general, uh, changing the PCO requires a complete uh, BST invariant vertex operators. That, that is what you do, because B, uh, PCO is Q, BRST acting on Xi. And you start deforming the contours, and that's how you show that it's independent of the position. Here it is not, because, because we want to do separately for this piece and that piece. Separately, they are not BRST invariant, right? It's the combination which is BRST invariant. But you can show that in this particular case, it, it, it is true. Okay? And that is because of this very peculiar thing that the, PC, the only way can, can, PCOs can contribute is uh, by soaking the charges of the internal theory. Okay, so th that you can do. So anyway, uh, so so this is fi the final result uh, after the speed structure sum. And now we can write down what are these correlation functions. Uh, okay, uh, this object. Now let me do a trick. Now a trick here. Uh, at the moment, I have four theta, uh, four, uh, four, four theta functions here. Uh, now I can use this. This condition, this condition, to um, to write something like this here, multiply and divide. So this would be I write it as uh, yeah. So write it as theta of some z a minus three delta. Okay, and then rewrite that on the top. So you multiply and divide by this, but in the numerator you just use this equation, and you find. 
it's the sum over yi uh, uh, minus z plus w minus delta. Okay? I mean, by this gauge choice, this condition, this is equal to that. So you're, you're just multiplying by 1. Huh? But this form is uh, uh, nicer to do, nicer to uh, deal with, because this object is exactly what will appear if you bosonize this um, uh, for the ghost system, BC ghost system. You see, if you uh, apply this formula, there are no C0 ghost, ghost zero modes. So you just take 3G minus 3 of the Bs, and that will, the theta function argument will be, I mean, there will be no spin structure because it's e integer spin. Okay? And it will be exactly sum over Zi minus 3 delta. Okay? Yeah, no Ws because I don't have any Cs. Huh? So this will exactly cancel uh, with the BC ghost system. Okay? So that, that's uh, what happens. And uh, these objects, these two theta functions, these two theta functions are, again, from that formula, you see, it is a, it's a 1, 0 system. It's a theta function which appear in the, for the 1, 0 system, uh, where you have g of these guys, so dimension 1, and 1 of the scalar. This is untwisted, so the scalar has a 0 mode, right? So you have a g of them and 1 of them. Okay? Um, so this, this object is, is precise, and in, in fact, you can see there are g of them, uh, because, uh, uh, so li let's look at here. These points are coming with a plus sign, right? Plus one. So these are all plus charge. Okay. So there are G minus one of them and then uh, one of them. So there are G of them with coming with a one sign, e to the i phi, let's say. And one of them comes with the minus i phi. So it's like G of the B fields and one of the C field, where B is one differential and C is zero differential. I mean, huh? Uh, so this is exactly the co correlation function of that system for lambda equal to 1, untwisted lambda equal to 1. Okay? And that result, I mean, so what is it going to do? It's, I mean, this correlator will just give you the zero modes of the one differentials, right? So uh, this part, this part, after combining, I didn't write all the prime forms here. So you should also write down all the prime forms. Uh, you know, and then you can see that these prime forms group in such a way that is exactly you get this such kind of blocks, right? So, you, so the, the the structure here is I have two one zero blocks untwisted. So there are, this is a square of that, okay? And then we have a, a twisted again one zero but twisted. These guys there are three planes. So there are the product over capital I, let's say, the three planes, hmm? that system. Uh, and then divided by the uh, three zeros, uh, the BC system, the two minus one system, which is that. Okay. Uh, so this object will, as I said, will cancel with the BC ghost system. Okay, it is not immediately obvious. You, you, there are some steps you need to do. Because you see, these positions, ZAs, are the positions of the PCOs. Okay? Whereas the BC system, the, the Bs, are folded with the Beltrami differentials. Right? So there are some steps. You have to argue that this is independent of Z. Okay? So even though we have chosen this gauge to do the calculation, but then at the end the result that you find, the, the end result is such that you can move the Z anywhere. It's independent of ZAs. Okay? And therefore, you can move the ZAs to the positions of the Beltrami differentials. Right, and then they cancel. So there are some steps, there are some subtleties, but it, it works out. Um, yeah. Uh, now this guy, we know what it is. It is simply uh, inserting g of this one differentials and one of the scalar. Scalar, the only zero mode of scalar is a constant, so that we don't care. And this guy is simply going to give me determinant of omega. Omega at uh, the positions. Uh, so I just write it in this notation, x, i, z. Okay. So there are g positions here, g differential. So determinant is the, you write it as a g by g matrix. Hmm? I hope this notation is clear, right? I mean, so you, you just think of this omega of x, uh, x, uh, x1, omega, omega i, huh? uh, omega i of x2, and finally omega i of z. 
Okay, and this is a, this labels a row, so i equal to one, two, three, g, and this is a determinant of this matrix. Okay. The determinant comes because these are all for me anti-commuting. This bosonic this uh, bosonization is for the anti-commuting system. So you have to take into account appropriate anti-symmetrization, and that's why you get determinant. So you get that, and similarly, the second one, second theta function is this. So you get this and dit omega of y, y i, w. Okay. That is all. The x and y dependence is only appearing there, nothing else. You can integrate that, and that will give you im tau, im tau factors, determinant of im tau factors, the period mat matrix. Because you have to do the similar thing for the right movers, right? This will give you determinant of omega bar, determinant of omega bar, and then integrate the x's and y's, you will just get determinant of m tau square. So the, the, all the positions are gone. I mean, positions of the, um, uh, this x's and y's have, uh, they have disappeared. Uh, in fact, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the, the position of z has completely disappeared because there's no z and w here. The two Zs and uh, the Z and W have disappeared, and um, uh, then you have this. Uh, so so yeah. Uh, so at the end, what what is what is happening here? So this guy is all gone. The only thing which is left over, BC has gone. Beta gamma is already gone because that we already used, huh? that we already bosonized to write down that formula. So everything else is gone. All the other fields have gone. Only thing which is left over is this internal theory. Right? Internal theory, this is a correlation function of the one a tw a twisted theory. It's a one zero system. Okay? So it's already, we have already arrived at the twisted theory. And remember that each of them, uh, there is a, uh, yeah, here, here. This object here, dxi. That is there because from the PCO, we had a psi bar dx. Right? All this correlation function we have written only for the psi bars. Dx will have no, uh, no singularities because they are all holomorphic. It's not a Dx and Dx bar. In that case, you will have a correlation function, right? But these are all just Dx, so they can only uh, soak. I mean, they can only give zero modes, the lattice zero modes, right? Nothing else. Um, so this Dxi will be basically expressed in terms of linear combination of the twisted differentials. You remember, I told you in the beginning that there are g minus one twisted differentials. On Riemann surface. So you expand them in terms of lattice momenta times the, I mean, the windings and so on, times these uh, twisted differentials, g minus one twisted differentials. So that's this. Uh, so at the end, what we have done is we have reproduced uh, this co correlation function has become simply uh, the product of, uh, of, uh, t of uh, uh, so in the n equal to two language, we had a g plus and g minus, right? So G plus, uh, the internal theory is n equal to 2 supersymmetry, n equal to 2 comma 2 superconformal theory, right? Yeah, exactly. So I have not written down because it will take a mess. Uh, but it, exactly it balances. It exactly comes out the right uh, products, so right uh, power so that you can use this formula. Exactly comes. And even all the sigmas, every, everything comes, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the, remember, we had a G plus and G minus. G plus had uh, was psi psi dx bar, the internal i i summed over i, <coughs> and G minus was <coughs> psi bar i dx i. <coughs> <coughs> so so what uh, after all doing all these things, what we are seeing is that this is basically the uh, 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 G G minuses sitting at uh, these points, u1, ui, u1, u2, and u3. Okay, so there are, how many of them are there? 2g minus 2. Uh, no, sorry, it, uh, 2g minus, no, 3g minus 3. 3g minus 3g minuses. 3g minus 3 because 2g minus, these are all coming from the PCOs, right? 2g minus 2 uh, was any way that you require for the genus G. PCOs, but then we needed to put additional g minus one PCOs to cancel this minus half picture, because all these Ramon vertices were coming from minus half picture, right? So that's why you have three g minus three of them. <coughs> Except now, so these are now you see that the way this is appearing, this is a one zero system. 
one zero system. So at each point, U, UIs, U1, U2, and U3, you have a dimension one fermion, twisted fermion, right? Uh, so this guy, this guy, after twisting, this guy became dimension one, and this guy became dimension two after twisting. Right? And that's exactly what you're finding here. Uh, these fermions are, are the, by using bosonization, this is dimension one like psi bar i, and multiplying dxi. dxi is still sitting there, right? So, so this whole thing reproduces just the g minuses. But now, these are dimension 2. You see. So is that logic clear? I mean, so here I, do, I, get, I get some answer here, OK? Now, start from the topological theory. In the topological theory, you will have simply uh, g, 3g minus 3 insertions of g minus. They are folded with the Beltrami differentials. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, okay, I, I will come back to that point. But they are folded with the Beltrami differentials. Here, these are just sitting at these points, PCO positions. Hmm? Uh, okay, so uh, so there you will, what you will find. I mean, G minus is that, right? But these are now in the twisted theory. This is dimension one, right? So when I write the correlation function of these guys, I will precisely get that. Right? together with the prime forms and so on. But uh, the, the theta, theta part will be just that. And then dxi. See, dxi are sitting there. So you have combined everything in terms of 3g minus 3g minuses. And finally, the way you can move this to the Beltrami differentials is actually, uh, that's what I mentioned, there is some subtleties here, that you have these positions, zas are the positions, these uis were just a partitioning of zas, right? Zs, there are g minus 3 of them. Then, then we partition because you have g minus 1. You, have to, you need g minus 1 to soak the first plane charge, second plane charge, and third plane charge. So g minus 1. But then at the end, you have to do the total anti-symmetrization, right? Because all pos possible partitioning are possible, right? So when you do that, all these partitionings, this simply becomes 3g minus 3 of Z A. Product over 3g minus 3. Z a going uh, a going from one to three g minus three. Okay, these are dimension two operators, right? Each of them is dimension two because we we saw that, and this guy is also dimension two. This is the BC system, right? So it's a ratio of the two dimension two systems, and you can uh, show that the uh, so so therefore it's a scalar, right? And you can show that the, there are no poles and uh, uh, and uh, zeros and poles. Okay, uh, that that that's the one step one has to prove. One has to prove that, but if if so, then it's constant. It's independent of z's, which is what you expect, right? The result should not depend on the PCO position. Uh, although at intermediate steps we have fixed, we have chosen this gauge, everything, right? But the end result is independent of the position, and then since it is independent of the position, you can translate them to the uh, Beltrami differentials. And when you trans, 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 I mean, translate them to the Beltrami differentials, this will cancel with the BC system, right? And instead of BC system, what is left, what, what appears with the Beltrami differentials are G minuses. Okay? So you get uh, the, after, after doing this operation, so first step is that this divided by that, that theta of ZA minus 3 delta, this is independent of position. It's a dimension one, a dimension zero, because this is dimension two. That's again BC system. So this is like this is like taking B, B at ZI, uh, B at ZA, right? So uh, this is uh, so this is dimension zero, dimension equal to zero, and one can show that the zeros and the poles are exactly the same, both in numerator and denominator. Okay. So therefore, it's a constant. So there are no, no, no poles, no singularities, right? So a scalar function must be a constant. And therefore, you can just translate this to the Beltrami differentials. I mean, there are mu folded with the Beltrami differentials. There are 3g minus 3 of them. Okay. So you just translate it in here. And then this b will cancel with that b. Okay. And you're left with, so you're left with mu g minuses product over uh, 3g minus 3, which is exactly the topological partition function, right? What about 
Uh, this gives you some impel factors, which is again needed to the space. I mean, I, I forgot to mention that uh, the space-time momentum integral uh, that will give you impel square factor, okay. which will cancel with that. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that's the. I finished even before time. <laughs> uh, I mean, there are a lot of details here which I have skipped, uh, you know, particularly the counting of prime forms, I mean, keeping track of prime forms and sigmas and so on, but they all work correctly. I mean, you just have to sit down and write them all down. They work out completely. Uh, no, BRC charge, I mean, this now we are writing the partition function of the, of the topological theory. In, the to, the, in that construction, you, all, all that you have is the, I mean, this is, to, this is the topological partition function, right? Where the, the field, the dimensions have changed. Psi bar has become dimension one. So it's a, here, here you have exactly the same, but the, only the internal theory, see uh, action on the Calabia. Yeah, that part is there. Uh, but uh, the difference is that it's not the usual sigma model. Here, the psi has become dimension zero and psi bar has become dimension one, which is exactly what you get. So this is a topological action where the dimensions have changed. And the, the reason why we say the dimension has changed is because of this, the correlation function. Right? This is not the correlation function of uh, dimension half. It is dimension one. Yeah. Um. Uh, by the way, I, I can just mention here uh, that even though this calculation we have done in, in the orbifold situation, because it's easier, orbifold, everything is free field, and you know you can, you just have to worry about the twists. Huh? Uh, but you can generalize it to arbitrary uh, n equal to two conformal superconformal theory, huh? and that is because the, because of these beautiful works of. Uh, Mm, of uh, what? Uh, Lerke, Lerke, and um, I, I just give you the reference. Let me see. Mm. Why is it that I cannot? Ah, Lerke. Lerke, uh, so there are these papers. So I, let me just mention what I'm trying to say. So there are these uh, two papers of, I think. Lerke et al., Lerke, uh, Schellekens, and uh, Warner. That's one paper. And I think other paper is Luce and Tyson. These are, these all, they came in the 89, 1989. Both of them are in 89. This is PLB, um, B227. Page 373, and this one is physics letters again. B. Ah, this is the same volume actually. BLB 227, and how is it possible? Ah, 367. So they are like just adjacent papers. <laughs> uh, so what they do? So what are they doing here? Uh, is that, you know, this n equal to 2 superconformal theory, you have, of course, as we said, there is g, j plus, j, g minus, t, of course, and j. That j is the u1 charge. Huh? Now, of course, it's a, it, we, I mean, you cannot write down the full theory. But they can, what they can do is they can uh, find out charges. You know, and they come in certain uh, Kasmodi representations. I, I forget now, the, some exceptional group. Right? They appear, the E6 or something like that, they appear. And so this is completely known. Okay? And that is all that is required here, you see? Because all re that is required is the spin structure sum here. Okay? And for the spin structure sum, it is enough to just know the, the U1 charge lattice. Okay? So yeah, you can generalize it to arbitrary Calabio. Arbitrary n equal to superconformal theory. Hmm? With a C equal to 9, of course. Huh? So, 
the, and that is because in all of this discussion, only thing which entered was the U1 charge. Yeah? And that U1 charge is what enters in the spin structure sum. And that's all you need to do. Because once you have done the spin structure sum, there's a twisting of the dimension, dimension shift, you know? and then you get the topological theory. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, I, I, I understand, I understand. No, I understand what you're saying. I don't know if we have done this uh, ever with the correlation function. I mean, I, I inserting. Did, did we do the moduli derivatives? Maybe we have done, I'm not sure. Uh, moduli derivatives, right? Yeah. Yeah, true. I mean, I, I think, no, I don't think we have, I think certain things you can do probably. I mean, although we have not done it, eh? uh, which are not going to be too much, much more difficult than this analysis, uh, is like uh, taking moduli derivatives, derivatives with respect to moduli. Uh, and I hope, I mean, it, it will be, the result will be the twisted uh, insertions. Some of spin structure sums is, is what is doing the shift. Mm -hmm. uh, no, so the, the, all that you need, I mean, you don't need really the details of this, uh, the three theta functions. Huh? Yeah, you want charge. It, yeah, you can again show that. So the, instead of all of these three, three theta functions, the internal, the internal theta functions, uh, what will be required is just the U1 charge lattice. Right. And that, yeah, that, that, that is all that's required. So speed structure only appears here. That's the thing. Yeah, precisely. That's what it is. Yeah, okay. exactly. Exactly. Everything yeah, 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 yeah. So the G minus, so the D axis. So it, it typically, let's say in two A theory, I mean, you will have Wilshire centons, right? So genus G is wrapping on some yeah. cycles of the Calabio, and all that. Uh, when you write down those centons, they will appear in D X. D X are all zero modes. I mean, they are not uh, that there is any singularities there. I mean, they're just a zero modes, and those zero modes will be corresponding to the instanton Wilshire so. so Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking about the F, uh, where are you buried? That's right. F, uh, yeah. Example, yeah. So, this is simply to show that uh, all, everything else uh, is the topological. Yeah. Well, no, cancel and what you yeah, have correct, correct. is uh, yeah. just simply with uh, this winding. That's right. In this case, uh, it's clear what uh, we are going. It's a generic uh, Calabria. Uh, in generic Calabi, it will be just uh, G minuses, whatever the G minus of, of that uh, system, N equal to two superconformal theories, and there will be some zero modes. I mean, no. yes, okay. yeah. Explicitly, yeah, explicitly what it is, yeah. True, true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here you can understand exactly yeah. what are the modes and zero yeah. modes, what are they doing. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, this are, as I said, the D axis will be uh, expanded, those, those D axis inside the G minus. So this was the psi bar i dxi. So this dxi uh, will be uh, expanded in terms of uh, twisted differentials. I call it omega tilde, right? Whatever the twists are, yeah? uh, hi. And there are g minus one of them. So there will be something like the, uh, the lattice momenta, la lattice uh, thing, times uh, omega tilde i. g minus one of them. We expand it. And, uh, Um, okay, I don't think I will discuss that. Just, just to summarize, you know, just to say one more thing, that in another paper, uh, after, after some time, I think pretty soon, 
Uh, there's a, another, this, this was the paper I already mentioned. Uh, there's a paper which we wrote in 95, again the same collaboration, Ignatius, uh, Tom, and uh, uh, Gava, right? The same combination. Um, uh, so we uh, studied the heterotic dual of this theory. Okay? Because uh, that was a time when the duality came to the picture, right? Uh, through these works of Ashok, I mean, all of that, all of these people, they, so their different theories were dual to each other and so on. So, uh, uh, type 2 theory on a Calabiao, uh, uh, if the Calabiao is a K3 vibration, no, then it is dual to a heterotic theory on K3 cross T2. Hmm? So, it is natural to them to study what happens in the heterotic theory. So, compute the same quantity, you know, the, the Gravy photon to the 2G minus 2 times the Riemann square. You compute that in the corresponding dual theory. Now, what happens is that whereas these objects are appearing at genus G, right? FG appears at genus G. When you do the duality map, you find that in heterotic theory, it appears already at one loop, G equal to 1. Hmm? You have to just dictionary, make the dictionary from the, uh, you know, the duality theory, right? Uh, so from that, uh, you can get, uh, you can, uh, one loop calculation, of course, much easier, right? I mean, so you can do the calculation. And the advantage with that going to the heterotic side is that you can actually probe the singularities. You know? Because here in Calabiao space, again, there will be singularity. But the singularities will come from what? From some cycle shrinking, some D-brain you know, cycle, like conifold. You know? uh, that's difficult to study uh, uh, here. No? Um, yeah. Right. But in heterotic theory, it's a one-loop calculation. So you can easily just go to some enhanced symmetry point or, you know, where some state becomes massless, perturbative state becomes massless, you know, and you can study the singularity, uh, what kind of singularity you get. And uh, that, uh, that was kind of, that led to finally, I mean, that's, uh, there's, a, there's a Schunger-like formula you can write down, Schunger-like formula. And that led to all this Gopakumar Bafa in, in that direction, you know, the topological string. But the, yeah, this you could study perturbatively. That, that was the advantage. of In heterotic theory, the answer will not be exact. Here, the answer is supposed to be exact in type 2. That is why, because type 2 dilaton is hypermultiplet. Okay? So it, it, it will not couple to this term, the, the W to the 2G term. There will be no hypermultiplet there. So since uh, type 2 dilaton doesn't couple, then this answer is exact. Not just said that, not only perturbatively, but even non-perturbatively. This is the exact answer, if you could calculate it. <laughs> uh, but, but in heterotic side, the dilton is, uh, is a vector multiplet, right? So it will not be exact. It starts at genus 1, and for sure there will be non-perturbative instanton corrections. That's for sure. But still, it is good to study the, the singularity when a state becomes massless. And that's you can control, because it's a perturbative state. Okay, so I think I'll just uh, start. Any questions? Or... Okay, so thank you very much uh, for inviting me. <laughs>